Hey, sadness, what's up? It's the Culture Detective here investigating your favorite albums. And today I'm going to be doing an album review on the new King Gizzard and the Lizard Wizard album, Omnium Gatherum. I don't know what is that. So King Gizzard and the Lizard Wizard is an Australian super band and this is their 20th studio album. For the last decade, King Gizzard has been putting out, putting out album after album after album after album after album. They have tried all sorts of musical genres, starting off with psych rock and psych pop. They have expanded their discographies to funk, rock, thrash metal, folk, Turkish house, jazz, like they have done everything, you name it. The only thing they haven't done is hip hop, really. And uh, anyways, uh, that's a bit of foreshadowing here because uh, Omnium Gatherum is their new album. And uh, for the past few years, I've been covering King Gizzard albums on this channel for a long time already. I've talked about Nonagon Infinity, Flying Microtonal Banana, Infest the Rat's Nest, and I love all of these albums. And also before Omnium Gatherum, they have released their two-parted self-titled albums, KG and LW, which are both pretty solid albums, even though they're not as great as some of their previous works. Anyways, um, Omnium Gatherum. This is their biggest project by far. This is one hour and 20 minutes long, and it is their most messy work because this album has everything from thrash metal to psych folk. And it also kind of interjects from track to track, meaning that one track would be rock and the next track would be followed up with a ballad and then it's another noisy rock track. And it's just kind of bouncing from this genre to that genre, from, from this genre to that genre. Now the album starts off with the dripping tap, which is a huge celebratory moment for the band because the lockdowns are over in Australia and the band can finally get together. And to celebrate that, they really pop off with uh, with this absolutely insane monster track, The Dripping Tap, which is an 18 minute long psych prog rock epic with a nice slow build up, some wild guitar riffs, a breakdown in the middle. And this track is a lot of fun with passionate performances and all, and I really like that. But I just feel like the length of this track is not justified. I feel like a lot of the riffs and a lot of the chords are pretty much the same throughout the whole 18 minute runtime and it just doesn't really have much it just it, it i just feel like it's 18 minutes for the sake of being 18 minutes long and then we have the track magenta mountain with the smooth synths the groovy beats some oriental tones and it really throws back to the last record that they did butterfly 3000 which actually came after KG and LW, but I completely forgot about that because that album was so forgettable. But uh, overall, this track is pretty nice. It's easy to the years, but I also don't think this track live up to all that much. And then we have the track Kepler 22B, which is a jazzy psych pop folk track with dreamy vocals, snappy drums. And we have lyrics about being in space, wanting to go to space, which is really cutesy and nice. And overall, the track is just so fluffy and easygoing. This is easily my favorite track off of the entire album. It's just so welcoming. And then we have the track Gaia, which is a nasty thrash sludge metal track with an odd time signature. My favorite thing about this track is the chugging guitar riffs. They're so loud and crunchy and noisy, and they're just so damn beefy. I just really like that. And this isn't the only metal track on this album. A little bit later in the album, we have the track Predator X, which pretty much throws back to infest the rat's nest with its thrash metal tracks. Except in my opinion, Predator X is just kind of okay. I just feel like... Predator X sounds like a like a little leftover, like a B-side from Infest the Rat's Nest and nothing else. It just doesn't it just doesn't sound like it has anything new to be put on the table. Meanwhile, the track Gaia has the chugging riffs that I like, but Predator X in my opinion just doesn't last um with such a strong impact or anything. Anyways, other tracks that I really like include uh Sadie Sorceress. Believe it or not, folks, 
believe it or not, they've done it. Hip hop. You know, earlier in this review I said the only genre the band had not tried is hip hop. Well, they did it. They, they, they did a rap track. And it's honestly not that bad. I think the rapping is energetic and I think the drums are really nice and crisp. And uh, yeah, sure, it doesn't... At the end of the day, it still sounds like a King Gizzard song. It's not like they're ripping off Eminem or something like that. It's not like they're ripping off someone or, or anything like that. It still sounds like a King Gizzard song with the muffled vocals that are kind of layered with the drums, with, with the really weird, freaky lyrics about uh, a witch defending herself from the townspeople. But um, yeah, it's not bad. It's definitely not a bad track. And even so, a little bit later in the track list, we have the track The Grim Reaper, where the band basically does another rap track, Giz Hop. And uh, again, with the nice drums, the muffly percussion, and they even mixed in with some flutes, which is really nice and creative. I really love it when I hear flutes in, a, in an album. Just in, in any album of any genre, if I hear flutes, I like it. Now, back to tracks that I like. I also really like Evilist Man, which is a seven minute long prog epic track with wild soaring riffs, nimble keyboards, these skippy 80s synth pop rhythms. And this track is multifaceted and it feels way more deserving of its length than the Tripping Tap does. But um, essentially this track is about evilness, the evilest man and this evilest man spreading misinformation. And then the next track, The Garden Goblin, is also a pretty good track. It's cheeky and goofy with the vocals, and I love the surreal synths. And uh, the vocals, they sort of uh, imitate a goblin, which is pretty fun. And I also like the track Persistence, which is a sweet little folk track about love and sweetness. The chords are really soft. They're really nice. I really love it. And uh, another track I love is Candle, which is a cutesy tropical flavored track with a jazzy intro, some light building hi-hats. The whole track is very dreamy and it has constantly changing dynamic chord progressions. However, even though there is a handful of tracks that I love in this album, a lot of the tracks here also kind of fall flat, like the track Ambergris, which is a simple track with a sequenced beat, smooth funky synths and guitars, which started off really nice, but at the end of the track, it just sounds like some background music to some commercial. It's just kind of mild. And then we have the track Blame It On The Weather, which is an okay garage psych rock track. The falsetto on this track does come off a little annoying because it just constantly rings like a, like a bee. And then we have Presumptuous, which is a Latin flavored jazz track, which is kind of mild followed with uh, Predator X and then Red Smoke, which is a very average and basic King Giz track. It's very forgettable. It's uh, King Giz as King Giz is. And finally, the album ends off on The Funeral, which is an instrumental outro with some interesting Hispanic flavored twiny guitars. But I think at the end of the day, given how huge this album is, this album outro just doesn't really do much as an ending. It's just kind of forgettable. So uh, yeah, while there are a handful of very innovative and creative and awesome tracks, I think there are still a handful of um, boring and basic tracks. So um, there are more misses than hits on the album, um, but I wouldn't say this is one of their greatest or anything. My favorite track here is Kepler-22B and my least favorite is Red Smoke. I'm giving King Gizzard and the Lizard Wizard with Omnium Gatherum a decent 7 out of 10. So I have listened to the latest King Giz album for one to ten images. Rate it, like me, like it, and subscribe if you want more. And thanks for watching. Um, there are tons of albums that I have yet to review, so I'll be going over them a, a little bit, uh, maybe in a mini albums review, um, maybe not. So I have yet to review Spiritualized, Red Hot Chili Peppers, Sweet Trip, Edge Traders Music Beat, Valeria Almeida, and Undeath.